I was just looking at the attendance. We've got a great attendance. So once again, I want to thank everybody because I realize that time is important and I will move straight into the curriculum aspect now. Uh, a screen should be uh, coming through. Hannah, could you tell me if you're able to view this now? Yes, we can view it. It's just, uh, sorry, just loading up as you're pressing present. Yep, yeah, all good. Okay, brilliant. Okay, so uh, to the parents that will be watching us on the recording, a welcome to our early years phase parents meeting in regards to an area that we abbreviate as RSE, which is our relationships and sexual education. This is something that in DBIS starts in early years and goes right through to our upper school year 13. And a crucial part of my role is developing the curriculum in this area, which is uh, umbrellaed by the curriculum area of learning for life. So this is a pillar of our learning for life curriculum that we start in early years and it moves through. So when I refer to early years, I'm referring to nursery through to year two, which is different for some of our parents that have been as part of our school for many years. I want to talk to you about the journey that has uh, got us to the place we're at now. When I came into the role, we realized that a part of what we needed to do was review the uh, PSHE or the Learning for Life curriculum that uh, we refer to it at DBIS school because we realized that the growing needs of our society were changing and the social and emotional aspects of a holistical approach to our children was something that at DBIS we regarded as very important. And during a review of 2018 and 19, which was carried out school-wide, we realized that there were areas of the school that could be strengthened so that we had a common language and a common approach for all of our parents that choose to use DBIS as a through school. So that the language that's being used in the classroom is also the language that our parents are aware of so that if they choose to, they could use in the home. And another part of this is so that our parents were aware of what we were teaching in regards to such sensitive issues as we're about to cover today. So this is another part of our approach to our community, informing them so that they can reflect and feedback. And this is all part of a continually evolving process. In 2019 and 20, we redesigned our curriculum, which has been going through in uh, specific phases. We started with our primary phase. For those of you that are in this call, you'll be uh, aware of these particular aspects that I'm talking about now. Then we move through to our secondary phase, and we are now at the aspect of only certain areas of our early years because the consistent approach from the very beginning of early years is that social and emotional learning is just always being seen at the forefront of the way that early years approach the curriculum. So in regards to our whole school, early years has always been a for, at the forefront of what we do in regards to this. And actually the rest of the school has been learning from the approach from many of the teachers. So we implement, implemented and reviewed was the plan for 2021. Uh, due to COVID, this gave us some obstacles. And so as we push forward to 21 and 22, the idea is that this will be implemented into all phases of the school. We will then have a focus on planning, teaching and learning. And as you will see, the feedback from the parents as we continue to build specific parent groups in each phase, which you will be informed about as we continue through this, pro uh, this process. This hasn't just been only in regards to what DBIS wanted. I'll go through why we needed to do this. Some of you will be aware of the CIS review that we went through a number of years ago for accreditation. There is an expectation that we meet certain criteria to stay part of this accreditation. Uh, and also part of that, we developed a well-being team, which is school-wide. So there is a complete collaboration right from early years through to year 13 for those of you that are going to be families with us for many years to come. We have designated specific curriculum leaders into each phase, and we have looked at the specifics over the last 18 months of RSE. So just to once again, we that abbreviation is uh, in regards to relationships uh, and sexual education. And for those of you that are connected to the UK, you will understand that there are statutory guidelines that are part of this process as well. We do not have to meet those requirements back in the UK, but this is something that guides us. Uh, 
So I've got here by the end of year six, okay, because this is the, the, the next stage. But by the end of year six, when you have time to reflect on this, this is what we're aiming for all of our children to know about by the time they leave the early years and primary phases. But the area that we're going to be talking about today is the specifics that we are required to from under these two guidelines. So we use the uh, UNESCO uh, guidelines to support us in what is best practice in regards to relationships and sexual education and the PSHE association guidelines into what is being delivered. And this is something that's very important. What is age appropriate from the research that these two foundations found, okay? So that leads us, which then allows us to be part of the CIS accreditation for best school practice. Which leads us into how do we teach RSE at DBIS early years? We specifically use a program designed by the NSPCC, which is abbreviated for the uh, Protection of Cruelty to Children. Some of you may be aware of this. And it is a program called PANTS. It is a simple way that parents, because you are a big part of this, that, and teachers can help keep children safe from sexual abuse without that use of scary words. And we don't even refer to sex. Now that is a, a, um, always a concern of our parents. And I'm gonna continue to develop the, the meaning behind this. So our PANTS program, centers on five key rules. That our young people know that their privates are private. They always remember that their body belongs to them. That no means no. That we need to talk about secrets and we'll go into the term secrets that upset them. And that it is important that we can speak up and know who these people that we can speak up to so that someone can can help us or even ease our concerns and as I've mentioned this is a very sensitive area to many of our parents and this is dependent on a number of environmental factors and as a school we respect all of those which is hence why we have this opportunity that we inform our parents and there will be processes where after this meeting if you still have concerns we'll be there, we'll be able to answer them but our key aspect where we come from as a school what is our mindset is so that we are able to strengthen the understanding with our young people that from an early age that we can teach them the strategies which will enable them to protect themselves and for our parents to have those strategies as well so that we're working together as a team and the why which often is frightening is the research that came out from the PANTS program 2014 that 90% of children that were sexually abused were abused by someone that they knew and that one in three children abused by an adult chose not to tell anyone. So specifically as we move forward I'm going to be looking at what we do in each stage. So we start at the reception stage. Nursery is the fundamental ideas of safety and in regards to like uh, health and awareness. But we use the PANTS program specifically from reception stage. And there are three areas, as you can mention, that we develop the awareness of body parts, the awareness of the uh, correct names, and the awareness of the differences. But I want to go into this in a bit more detail, of course. When we refer to body parts in reception, okay, I want to be very clear here. In reception, we're talking about these aspects here. Hair, head, eyebrow, nose. We don't specifically refer to, in lessons in reception, penis or vagina. In regards to best practice throughout the school in day-to-day, if a child may approach a teacher or an adult in the school that is working and they were to say such uh, an example of this off the top of my mind, my willy is hurting, then the teacher would refer to this for best practice. Do you mean your penis is hurting? Uh, and you can, because uh, uh, we are wanting to be able to remove 
the pet names that many of our children have. But in reception, we're looking specifically in the classroom lessons, okay, in the classroom lessons, basic body parts. And I've given a link for those of you when, it's, uh, when I share the lesson slides with you. You can have a look at what this lesson looks like in more detail. And everything that I cover here today, you will see the lessons that are actually covered in your ch children's classroom in detail, which is a fa fabulous part of the NSPCC program pants. As we move on to the primary year one, we build on that reception content that they know their body parts, that they have an understanding of health and awareness from other aspects of the greater Learning for Life curriculum. But specifically to RSE, we look at exploring the pants content. And this is uh, three lessons, specific three lessons based around certain books and discussion that arises from these particular books. These books are there to reinforce that awareness of body parts. We're looking at the anatomical names now. So we would refer to it as the penis and the vagina. And we are looking at the regards of the principles of pants, which is the basics only. Once again, when you see these lessons plans, you'll see the differences between what they learn in year one and year two. And we look at the underwear rule, and we start to introduce the concept of a trusted adult. And what does this look like? So these are the books here, and we've given you a link so that you're able to see this. Now, it's really important, though, that if you are to view these books, you need to view it aligned with the lesson plans that our teachers will be using, because the detail of this program is, if you were to read this book alone, you'd be... For some of you, you might have some concerns. But we are aware of the age appropriateness. And the detail of this program is, for example, I can't remember how many pages this is, if it's a 20-page book. But there are some parts in it that it's not age appropriate for what we consider advised by the PANS program for a, a child that is five. So it says specifically, stop at page six. Do not go beyond. We're very, very clear in the training of our teachers about this as well. And Hannah, Hannah and myself will be once again reviewing this with our uh, year group leaders uh, this afternoon after this uh, meeting. This is the other book that they use. Remember, I referred to three lessons based around uh, books. This is the other one. Once again, there's a link for you if you wish to have this at home, for those of you that wish to. Uh, I believe our library will have copies of it as well. Um, not that I'm promoting it, but there are also copies on YouTube that can be read aloud as well. And this is the third book here. Your body belongs to you. I'm going to play to you the, uh, some of you may know this, this is a video that gives us a quick outline of the pants program with the Pantosaurus. And I think it's, a, a, the reason why I want to show this is because it will come across the, um, the, although serious message for our children, but yet delivered in an age-appropriate way. And I'll play the first, first 30 seconds of this. Uh, once again, this is available on YouTube. Everything is available in the NSPCC website. Um, we are following it as it says. So I'll play the th first 30 seconds. This is <laughs> All right, I think from that short clip, you'll see the, the uh, tone, the age appropriate tone, uh, even the graphics you know visual visualizing that there is a serious tone a serious message but yet very intentionally not there to create fear not there to create any concern for our young people because of their cognitive ability to understand these bigger concepts right age appropriate directed in intentional ways based around materials that have been accredited and sourced 
as I mentioned, we look at the trusted adult. We start to develop this particular lessons like this in the classroom where our young people can identify within their lives people that they would consider to be a trusted adult. We look at that basic concept there, as you can see, mom, dad, granddad, people that they feel that they can talk to, depending on the individual child, which, which is the content that is covered in year one. I, I, I believe most of you will believe that's age appropriate. Once again, no intention to create any concern for a young person, giving them uh, skills and strategies to be able to identify trusted people and understanding that their private parts belong to them. And developing this understanding behind the pants rule, we move into year two, where we develop a deeper understanding of pants, a deeper uh, of the underwear rule, which is more cognitively demanding, discussions about good and bad secrets relating to their bodies, and trusted adults, the development of this concept. So we start that in year one, we start the uh, pants program in year one, but we go into deeper, as you would expect, in if we were to refer this to another area of the academic uh, curriculum, you would expect there to be progression each year. This is the book once again. So our parents are informed and, and are aware of what that book is. They can access that. They can read through this as well. Once again, though, it must be aligned. I'm sorry, parents. I think I've got some people wanting to come into the meeting. I just need to check. Forgive me for that. So we've got the this particular book here. Once again, you can go through that. But as I mentioned, it must align with the lesson plans that you will find on the NSPCC website. And in the coverage, as I've mentioned, we have no mention of any sexual acts. Okay. That is even in regards to how babies are made. Uh, Etc. No mention of sexual abuse. You know, if I go back to one of the slides earlier, when we talk about ninety percent, I can't remember the particular of sexual abuse. Although the uh, the the intention behind this is to protect our children from these particular scenarios happening in their life, yet we do not mention sexual abuse, and we don't cover the specific risks and dangers of child abuses. So none of that is anywhere near any of our lessons. It's about our private parts belong to us, uh, body ownership and respect. When we may be told to keep a secret, as we might, but we want to be able to have uh, the, the trust within us that we have taught our, uh, our young people what would be a good secret to keep and what is not. Okay, some of that may uh, resonate with our families, and how can we ask a question and who do we ask a question to within the school environment and outside of the school environment? The underwear rule complaint, this, this is what you can download as a parent from the uh, website that I've spoken to. There will be links to in the slide, which is breaks down what the pants program means, etc. And I wanted to talk about this particular part because there are some concerns about some of the things what this could create within our young people's minds. So in the private to private part, you know, we, we teach our young people that uh, their parts are theirs only, uh, not to show others. But there are some situations, I want us to look at this uh, second part of this paragraph, that there are some situations such as family members at bath time, doctors or nurses may need to touch your private parts. We explain to children that that is okay. That has been some concerns that I've heard in the par uh, past that they don't, we don't want to create this uh, fear of, of our children when we're washing them, etc. Okay, so we, we explain that there are some people in some situations that may need to touch or see your private parts, but they can't do this without your permission. Okay, and we move into the what we cover in the A that your body belongs to you, that you should feel that you can tell a trusted adult when you're uncomfortable. No means no, that they have the right to say no, uh, and your bodies and, feel, uh, and feelings are respected. 
as I've mentioned to you earlier, good there, there are good secrets, bad secrets, and the importance of sharing this information. Remember that comes in around the uh, starts on the year two. In the year two, year one, uh, we look more at that basic concept of trusted adult. And S speaking up to somebody that they're not in trouble, they won't be in trouble. And we start to look at from that wider area of our learning for life curriculum, naming and identifying emotions. And this is something that Jess will be an integral part of, uh, emotion regulation, identifying emotions, and, and what we can do with those. That brings me uh, quite a lot to, oh, sorry, this brings me to the end of my presentation aspect of it. Uh, but Hannah, were there any questions that came through on the chat that I didn't have the chance to answer? Um, no, there's been nothing that's come through on the chat. I was just wondering if I could just um, pull up or put, put, um, elaborate on some of the points that you've made, Jason. Um, yes, because, of course. Um, Let you me know, come back to you now. I'll stop this presentation on my side. Sure, no problem. Um, and it's just really about the why behind why we do this. Now, um, some of you may or may not be aware that I'm coming to the end of a um, master's degree in advanced child protection studies. Um, and I think that as Jason mentioned at the beginning, you know, your children are part of a school where pe people genuinely care about their safety and genuinely care about their well-being. And this PANTS program and our relationships and sex education program is all part of that. Um, and I just wanted to um, elaborate on some of these things that Jason said to provide some of the some of the other context as to the why we're doing this. And um, so going back to the naming of body parts and why that's important. Um, you know, Jason talked about you know it's important for the children to know the correct names and terminology for their private parts. And I'm not, I'm not sharing this information to scare you, but to you know give you some of the the reasons behind why we teach the children this and why it is so important because. Um, it was something that was new to me, certainly, when um, we started talking about this. But one of the reasons that it's important that children are aware of the correct names for their body parts is because if there is a situation where they have, you know, God forbid, come into an abusive situation, if they're not able to talk about that in terms of using the correct terminology for their body parts, in the most of extreme circumstances, this can lead to possibly... Um, a perpetrator not being convicted because there's not uh, clarity about the children's body parts that they are disclosing have been touched or, or um, involved in some sort of abusive situation. So it really is important that your children know the correct names for their body parts um, and that this is taught from a young age so that there's no um, taboo around body parts, there's no shame around using the correct terminology and that that just becomes part of their everyday um, their everyday vocabulary as you would talk about your nose, your eyes, your ears, your mouth. Um, so that's something that I just wanted to highlight is um, that we, you know, it's really important that the children do understand what the names of their body parts are. And we, we may well have pet, pet names in families and that's absolutely fine. Um, but we do have a responsibility to make sure the children are aware of um, what, what the names of their body parts are. Um, and the, the idea of teaching no is, again, a very important foundation um, in the early years to teaching children about later on in life about the, 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 um, the context of consent. Um, or sorry, the concept of consent. So teaching the children that no means no is a very important build, building block and foundation for children as they move through life to know that they do have a right to say no and that is centered around this concept of consent so that when they move into relationships later on that they understand from a very young age that they have a right to say no and they have a right over their own personal bodies and that even comes into um, you know the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child is that children do have rights and they have a right to be kept safe um, and one of those ways of keeping children safe is making sure that they have that vocabulary and understanding that they have the right to say no. Um, I think I just wanted to touch upon the fact that this is built into the trusted adult is built into the culture of our school um, and the culture that we want to create for your children and um, again uh, very much is talked about safeguarding is that schools do have an extremely important responsibility second to their families you know your teachers will see the children probably you know they're, they're the next people that see your children as much throughout their day and um, so we want to build a culture here of children understanding that they come to school and they're surrounded by adults that they can trust. And with that comes creating a culture where children can feel that they can disclose, they can talk to adults. And it comes back to the point that Jason was making, making that shockingly, you know, many children that are abused don't disclose this to their 
um, to any adult, and that can lead to a huge array of problems later in life. So it's about us building a community here where children understand that the adults that are surrounded by them, not just their teachers, but with Jess and Jason and the adults that they come into contact with, we've built a culture where they feel that they are comfortable. Um, and just again, picking up on the um, resource that Jason has shared, I can't emphasize enough how fantastic the NSPCC website is, not only for educators, but for parents as well. Um, there's a wealth of information on the NSPCC website. So please do go and take a look because it really is a wonderful resource and lots and lots of information for parents as well. It's not just um, directed at schools and our curriculum that we deliver. Um, Jason, I'm just looking there, there's a, um, question that's just question, come up, which yeah. I'm just going to read. Um, in reception last year, the children did not have the opportunity to learn the pants curriculum due to the school closures. Are they going to be able to catch up on what was what was missed in learning in EY1? Um, and that's from Catherine. Um, yes, the short answer is Catherine, absolutely. Um, it, we, we had a bit of a struggle last year in terms of um, do we deliver element of pants online? Because obviously that is not the best forum to be able to do that. So um, there were sort of touches and um, um, what's the word sort of um, uh, some some references I suppose to pants um, but certainly it wasn't taught in the way that we would want to um, and while we've got the children in school at the moment and we've got the regularity of, or a much more regular timetable certainly not close to what we would want it to be but we have that much more regular um, routine of the children being in school so yes we will be making sure um, that the things that the children should have covered in detail last year are covered in detail this year as well. Um, and I think I just wanted to, one more thing, sorry, as, as it's reminded me, I think one of the things we come across quite a lot in the early years is about children sharing their private parts and, um, you know, it's, it's a you show me yours and I'll, I'll show you mine sort of thing. Um, and again, the way that I need you to know and um, understand that we would deal with that is by not creating this blame culture for children where you shouldn't have done that or you shouldn't have done this. Because again, later in life, um, it comes to the fact that will children disclose this if they feel that the first thing that's going to happen to them is they're going to get told off um, so our approach whenever there's anything to do with children sharing private parts um, children using language that we're concerned about anything that's related to the things that we've been talking about today um, is very much handled in a sensitive manner and we certainly don't take an approach of reprimanding the children um, and feeling that they're being told off so to speak I mean I'd like to think that we don't tell our children off and we, we have very positive conversations with our children that underpins our approach at the early years um, but we are creating a culture in this school um, of not um, a blame culture and certainly not a victim blaming culture and um, so if there is ever something to do um, with a concern that we may have in school or something that's come to light number one we would involve you as parents um, but number two we certainly create a culture where children feel that they can come and have these conversations and that just comes through regular dialogue with the children ensuring that curriculums such as this are delivered um, and that they don't stay fixed in time to the curriculum. So it's not something that we only talk about in our pants lessons. This is something that um, underpins the personal, social and emotional development of children throughout the early years. Thanks, Hannah. I think if there are no more questions, I'd like to talk to you about the process that's going to happen now. Uh, I'm, this recording is going to be sent through to the IT department to upload onto our Wellbeing Hub that you can get as part of your uh, parent portal, and that's under the tab Wellbeing. Under that tab of Wellbeing, you'll also notice that there's a number of resources that are put into age-appropriate um, tabs. I'd encourage you to always refer to this because it has many hints, many tips, many great websites within there as well. But this specific workshop will be uploaded under Wellbeing Workshops. Within that Wellbeing Workshop, I'm also going to include a couple of links that I believe is going to be really helpful from a number of requests that I've received from parents in the early years and primary sectors lately about concerns in regards to child development around social and emotional areas. This, uh, this particular website looks at um, particular stages of development and what our children uh, possibly, and I want to be really clear here because I'm not a big fan of that we have to have specific norms, but it gives us an indicator into what our child uh, should be able to do at this particular age and around that, which really assists us when it comes to social and emotional development. Uh, specifically, as we will see with this uh, 
approach back into school more time uh, healthy relationships all right and how how uh, specific areas would be particularly what we'd consider to be this is something that happens at that age all right well so jess and i and hannah are getting a, a concerns and these are things that our young people would generally be able to approach when they're in that normal school routine so we're going to probably see a bit of a peak there but we've got some great strategies and processes already in place that we'll be talking about with our uh, year group leaders as well today we are so excited about our children coming back into school full time and especially in regards to this area of social and emotional development i want i want to thank you once again for taking the time to turn up uh, the the link will be posted out to you in your weekend bulletin uh, if it's uploaded and you can share this with your friends uh, for from the children in your i believe they're called uh, the are they still called the, the <laughs> this this is a, a bit of a faux pas miss cole are they still reception and nursery what are the uh, particular are the year groups they get called gardens don't they or am i wrong there the classes yes yes so the classes are um yes different names of different classes but yes the different year groups yeah. <laughs> that's, right, that's, right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> that's that's my bad everybody i'm sorry i had a, I had a bit of a blank mind there but no we're going to be sending that out and jess myself and hannah are available to talk about this in more detail but as i told you the specifics of the details and these lesson plans are on the website uh, and that is how we follow them but as hannah said this is something that we'll continually always refer back to within the school year this is not just something that is a standalone we only do it in at the, at the beginning of this week to this week no this is something that we discuss at all times as relationships evolve and uh, the the development of the child so once again Thank you very much, and you're most welcome to leave. Thank you.